Hello everybody, this is Nanduram and we are from Sonu Academy. Today we are going to explain about cells organized to form tissues. Children, as mentioned earlier, a pile of bricks do not represent a house. Similarly, a mass of cells do not form an organism. These cells must be organized into proper parts of a body. In all the multicellular organisms, this process of organization, the cell into body parts starts after the differentiation. All the cells designated to carry out a similar function will have the similar structure and are grouped together to form a tissue. Several tissues organize it to form an organ and several organs organize to form an organ system and finally it changes into organism. Let us study how the tissues are organized. Cell, cell to tissue, tissue to organs, organs to organ system, organ system to organism. In unicellular organisms, all the body functions are carried out by a single cell. In very primitive multicellular organisms, as in some of algae such as volvox, hundreds of cells are grouped together to form a colony. In the colony, most of the cells are vegetative cells. Only few cells in the colony carried out reproduction and this called reproductive cells. Thus, the work to be done in the colony is divided among the cells and this is the primitive form of differentiation. In the modern multicellular organism, this division of work or a labor is much more complicated. A tissue is a group of cells having similar structure and carry out a similar function and they have a common origin. Usually, a tissue has several thousands of cells arranged closely. These cells are packed in a framework or called extracellular matrix. This is made up of proteins and carbohydrates. The matrix also provides mechanical support for the cell in the tissue and keeps the cell in position. All the cells in a tissue communicate with each other of a efficiently carried out the function as a single unit. Plant and animal tissues are different in structures and functions. Let us study more about the plant and animal tissues. Plant tissues. There are simple and complex tissues in plants. These are parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma are the examples of some tissues. While xylem and phloem are examples of complex tissues. Simple tissues have only one type of cell while complex tissues have several different types of cells. Parenchyma. Parenchyma is the fundamental and simple plant tissue. Almost all the primary structures like leaves, flowers and young stems are made up of parenchyma. Cells in parenchyma are living cells. They cannot be either round, square or polyhedral. There are different types of parenchymata cells. There are colorenchyma, parenchyma, storage tissue, water storage. Let us see about the colorenchyma. Cells in this type of parenchyma have chloroplast and are commonly seen in leaves. Parenchyma. These have air spaces are present between the cells. This type of parenchyma is seen in plants which float on water such as plants called as hydrophytes. Storage tissue. Cells in this type of parenchyma store food material. This type of parenchyma is seen in tubers and rhizomes. Water storage. Cells in this type of parenchyma store water. Such cells are seen in desert planets. Colenchyma. Colenchyma is also a simple living tissue. This tissue is present in the stems of herbs and shrubs. Cells may have chloroplast. Cells in colorenchyma are short and square or long and fiber-like with pointed ends. Cell wall is made up of cellulose and pectin which gives strength to the tissue. Colenchyma gives flexibility and tensile strength to the plant. Sclerenchyma. Sclerenchyma is a tissue with dead cells and is designed to give mechanical strength to the plant. It also protects the parenchyma from damage to, due to stretching, bending and pressure. Lignin is the major component in cell walls of these cells present in sclerenchyma. Xylem Xylem is a conductive tissue which has both living and non-living cells. It conducts 
water and minerals from roots to other parts of the plant. Apart from this, xylem gives mechanical strength to the plant. Xylem tissue is also helps in identifying the plant species. There are three kinds of non-living cells in xylem. There are fibers, rachids and vesicles. Xylem and phyma is the living component in xylem. Cell walls of the xylem are thick because lignin is decomposition. It also commercial very useful. Phloem. Phloem is also called bast or leptome. Unlike xylem, phloem is a living tissue. Cell walls have lignin decomposition. Phloem is composed of five types of cells. There are sieve cells, serve tubes, companion cells, phloem fibers and phloem parent. Serve cells and serve tubes are long with tapering ends. Serve plate with one to many serve pores is present at the end of serve tube. The conduction of food material from leaves to other parts take place through phloem tissue. Besides the phloem commercial value, a best fibers present in phloem are used for making rope. Animal tissue. On the basis of their function, animal tissues are, are of four major types. They are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue and nerve tissue. Let us examine the structure and functions of these four kinds of tissues in animal. Epithelial tissue. It includes in man. Epithelial tissue forms a covering over the surface of the body as well as an outside and inside of several internal organs. Examples. Skin is an epithelial tissue on outer side of the body. Lining of the digestive tracts is a covering of epithelial tissue cells on the internal organ. Epithelial tissue performs several functions. They offer protection, produces structure like hair, nails, feathers and horns in the forms of gland cells. They secrete a variety of chemicals and may involve in receiving external stimuli. Cells in the epithelium are very close to each other and are joined together by a cementing substance. Epithelial cells occur in various shapes, flat, cube-like, long and cylindrical, etc. Epithelial cells lining the digestive and respiratory systems of several animals have hair-like projections called cilia. They help in moving of the food particles or mucus. Epithelial cells may be present in a single layer called simple epithelium or may occur in multiple layer called stratified epithelium. Tissue. Connective tissue Connective tissue helps in binding the other tissues and organs together and provides a framework and support to various organs in the body. This tissue also plays a major role in the transport of material from one tissue to another. It also helps in the body defense, body repair and in the storage of fat. There are different types of connective tissues, each performs a different function. Example, Erylor tissue is one of the type of connective tissue which joins different tissues. It helps in packing these tissues and thus helps to keep the organs in place. Cells called fibrioplast. These are the major components in this type of connective tissue. These cells secrete fibrous material which holds the other tissue in position. These cells are also help in repair the tissues which are injured. Cartilage tissue. Cartilage is a type of connective tissue found in the joints of bones of ribs, ribs tip of the nose, external ears and in trachea. Embryos of several vertebrates do not have bone but they have cartilage. The entire skeleton of fishes like sharks is made up of cartilage. Cartilage is a hard but not as hard as bone. Bone is another type of connective tissue. It is a major component of skeletal system of several vertebrates. Bone is made up of calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. This salts are secreted by cells called osteocytes. These cells are present in the central hollow portion of the bone called bone marrow. Ligament 
ligament is yet another type of connective tissue that connects bones at the joints and holds them in position this is made up of a large number of fibers these fibers are made up of a protein called collagen tendon tendon is a type of connective tissue which is also made up of fiber the tendon joins the muscles to the bone it is also made up of collagen adipose adipose or a fat tissue is a type of connective tissue which stores fat this tissue is present beneath the skin around the kidneys and in a bone marrow this tissue is made up of a large number of cells called adipocytes or fat cells cytoplasm of these cells is filled with fat granules the fat is used for the production of energy required for the body during starvation the layer of fat especially below the skin prevents heat loss from the body blood is called fluid connective tissue it differ from other types of connective tissue there are several different types of blood cells each one has different function as the cells in the blood float freely in the plasma extracellular space is filled with a fluid called plasma there are no fibers in the blood a normal adult human has about 5 liters of blood the chief component in plasma is water besides water it also has several nutrients such as glucose amino acids proteins vitamins and hormones etc it required for the body and excretory products such as lactic acid urea salts etc plasma also contain factors responsible for blood clotting cells present in blood are called corpuscles and there are of three types red blood cells white blood cells and blood platelets red blood cells these are known as erythrocytes and these are in red color in mammals red blood cells do not have mitochondria nucleus endoplasmic reticulum lysosomes and ribosomes in fishes amphibians and reptiles they have nucleus these cells are concave on both the sides they have red colored protein called hemoglobin which helps in the transport of oxygen and carbon dioxide one milliliter of human blood has about 500 crores of blood cells in human adult red blood cells are formed in bone marrow and live for 120 days in blood the second type of blood cells are white blood cells these cells they do not have hemoglobin hence they are colorless these cells are less in number there are two kinds of white blood cells there are granulocytes and agranulocytes there are three types of granulocytes there are neutrophils basophils and eosinophils these three kinds of cells attack and destroy the microorganisms that enter the blood all these three types of cells have granules in their cytoplasm hence they are called granulocytes a granulocytes there are lymphocytes and monocytes lymphocytes secretes antibody toward the foreign material that enter into the blood monocytes move like amoeba and along with granulocytes they attract the foreign material and engulf with them the foreign material are destroyed inside the cells blood platelets these are separate group of cells which do not have a nucleus there are thick disk like bodies whenever a blood vessel is injured platelets accumulate at the site of injury and helps in the formation of a blood clot the clot seals the wound in the blood vessel and prevents the blood loss several chemicals present in the blood are required for blood clot forming animals muscle tissue muscle tissues muscles are responsible for the movement of hands and legs and also of several internal organs such as an intestine and heart a small amount of muscle tissue is also present in blood vessels this helps in increasing or decreasing the diameter of blood vessels and thus regulate the blood flow heart is made up of only muscle cells and they help in pumping the blood muscle cells have the capacity to shorten this is called constriction and generate enough force for the movement 
द मजल रिमेंस कंस्ट्रक्ट ओनली फॉर ए शॉर्ट टाइम एंड रिटर्न टू इट ओरिजिनल लेंथ दिस इज कॉल्ड रिलैक्सेशन ईच मजल इज सप्लाइड विथ ए नर्व इन साइड द मजल टिश्यूज द नर्व डिवाइड्स इन टू सेवरल ब्रांचेस सो दट ईच मजल सेल इज कनेक्टेड टू द नर्व वेन द नर्व इज स्टिमुलेटेड द स्टिमुलेस रीचेस ईच मजल सेल इन द टिश्यू एंड द एंटायर मजल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट एट वन टाइम एज एन यूनिट बेसड ऑन देर स्ट्रक्चर लोकेशन एंड फंक्शन मजल्स आर देर थ्री टाइप्स दे आर स्ट्रेटेड मजल्स नॉन स्ट्रेटेड मजल्स एंड कार्डियक मजल्स स्ट्रेटेड मजल्स दिस इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड स्केलेटन मजल हैज इट इज अटैचड टू द बोन्स इन द स्केलेटन एंड इट इज रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द मूवमेंट्स मूवमेंट्स ऑफ दिस मजल्स आर अंडर अवर कंट्रोल इफ यू वॉन्ट वी कैन मूव अवर हैंड्स और लेग्स हेंस दिस मजल्स आर ऑल्सो कॉल्ड वॉलेंट्री मजल्स Each muscle has several long, thin, and unbranched fiber-like cells. Each cell is a long as the muscle. The several thin lines are striations across the muscles, hence the name striated muscle. Muscle contraction also produces heat. When the body is exposed to cold, we shiver. During shivering, muscle contracts and relaxes rapidly during a large amount of heat. This keeps our body warm. non striated muscle this muscle consists of short elongated spindle shaped cells these cells do not have straight striations hence the name non striated muscles or smooth muscles construction and relaxation of this muscle is not under our control hence it is called as involuntary muscles these muscles are present in blood vessels intestine and other tissues which exhibit involuntary movement cardiac muscles as the name itself indicate this muscle is present in heart and it is responsible for pumping of blood the cells are long branched and have nucleus cells are joined to each other at the end all the muscles in cardiac are striations through it resembles and striated muscle in its structure it is an involuntary muscle nerve tissue nerve cells are special for receiving analysis and transmitting the information these cells receive information from various internal and external organs this information is interpreted and analyzed and integrated by the nerve cells these cells also generate appropriate responses which are communicated to internal and external organs of the body in the previous class you have learned how nerves transmit information from sense organs to brain nerve system is made up of two kinds of cells nerve cells are neurons and they are supporting cells are called gallium nerve cells have a body which is larger than the rest of the cell from the cell body two types of process are given the large number of short branched tapering process are called dendrite a single long cylindrical process called axion both this process connected one neuron to another neuron neuron receives information through the dendrites and transmits information through an axon usually axons of several nerve cells form bundles called nerve the axon is covered with a membrane called myelin sheath in earlier classes you have learned about the nerve send the information to the brain in the forms of electrical current whenever a nerve is stimulated it produces a small electrical current 0.005 volts it is called an action potential these are generated near the cell body and travel down the length of axon and are passed on to other neuron the dendrites of the another neuron receives the information and passes it to the body of the nerve for this process and this process is repeating forever points to be remember in this lesson nerve tissue has neurons and supporting cells are called gallium cells in a tissue all the cells have similar structure and functions and these cells are packed in extracellular matrix thank you this is nanduram and we are from sonu academy